All right, what is going on today, guys? Um, today, I want to discuss a topic that I'm sure a couple of you have thought about before at some point. And, um, you know, that is, are these cars good for, like, teen drivers? You know, this, would this be, like, a good first car for your son or even your daughter, you know? Um, or even if you're a younger driver looking to purchase a car, if, you know, this would be something that's even worth, uh, <clears throat> you know, buying. Um, I probably sound a little weird in the video. I'm like sick. I've had like a sore throat and achy and stuff. Feeling a little bit better today, but um, I've been feeling like bled the last couple days, so um, that's why I sound like the way I sound. But um, you know, personally, I'm, I'll say right off the bat, um, the price you pay for these cars definitely is a is definitely a plus when you're you know a teenage driver. They're really cheap to get, so. You know, if you just want a cheap car for your son or daughter or even for yourself, um, the budget on these is right on point. I mean, they're super cheap. Um, you know, you could pick up a nice one for $4,000, you know, with like 80,000 miles, you know, 70,000 miles on it. You know, it's anything from like 04 to 2011 is pretty good. So if you picked up an 80,000 mile 06 or something, you know, that, that's a plenty good car right there for four grand. Um, now it doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be a Crown Vic. Um, it could also be a Grand Marquis or a um, you know a town car. Now town cars are going to be more money, so if you do end up getting a town car, just expect more of a a cost. So I, I'm 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 going to kind of just I'm going to take the town car out of it and include the Grand Marquis and the you know Crown Vics, even whether it's a civilian or the police interceptor. Now, the police interceptors um, are definitely better cars. So my thing's flapping in the wind here. Um, the police interceptors are definitely better built cars compared to the Grand Marquis and, you know, the civilian Crown Vics. You have a few more things that make them heavier duty, better cooling, um, you know, just an overall little bit heavier duty car meant for fleet service and, you know, everything else. So in that aspect, um, I would say these are probably your best to buy if you're a teenage kid or, like I said, if you are a teenager looking for a car um, for yourself. You know, these are definitely the, the most well-built, the most solid Crown Vic you can get. But on the downside to that is, you know, it is a police vehicle and it is a fleet service vehicle. So trying to find one that's, you know, generally in good shape, um, it's kind of hard to do sometimes. So... It's definitely going to make your search a little bit harder. Um, the prices can be weird. Um, sometimes the police interceptors go more than the civilians. Other times the police interceptors go for a lot less than the civilians, like the civilian car. So, like if a good condition police interceptor will generally go for more than like a regular, you know, P74, which is like the the civilian model. So, but if it's a really crappy police interceptor it will usually go for less than like a crappy civilian because it's just so bad that even owning like a civilian car that's beat up is generally in better shape. I, it's kind of hard to explain. They're a little weird sometimes the market on these, but that's from what I've seen like pricing wise on Craigslist and stuff. That's usually how I always seen the prices um, they seem to go. Um, Grand Marquis is around the same as like price as a Crown Vic. There's really not much difference. Grand Marquis is a little bit nicer, a little bit softer suspension, better MPG. Um, you know, an overall just more comfortable car to drive. Now this is very comfortable, the police interceptors, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I'm definitely not gonna get the MPG that a Grand Marquis will get. I think they have like 273 rear or whatever. I have a 327 in this, so I have slightly highway gears. Um, you can also get a 355 gearing, um, in case you are going to buy one of these. Look in the door jam here. I forget all the numbers, but as you can see, I have axle code X5. Um, that means that I have the 327. I think it's like Z something, Z5. I, I don't remember. I forget the codes, but um, different coding will tell you what type of axle, like what gearing you have. Um, four doors, that's definitely a good thing to have if you're a teenager. I'm sure you're going to, you know, take your friends out, go places, do things. Um, 
So it's definitely nice to have four doors back here and uh, create a decent sized back seat. So if you're a dude and you want to uh, take your girlfriend out to a nice scenic uh, location, if you know what I'm talking about, nice back seat for you there. Uh, pretty roomy overall, you know, they're overall just really nice roomy cars. Um, you know, usually ACs aren't an issue in these, so you'll probably have a car that the AC works and everything. Um, you can put a bunch of stuff back there, you know, if you're into like, uh, I should have brought my keys, I don't have my keys at me, but if you're into like, you know, BMXing or doing stuff like that, like kid stuff, uh, you know, skateboards or surfboards, whatever, you could probably fit, when I mean a surfboard, you could, but you can fit quite a bit in that trunk. Uh, it's pretty big. Uh, maybe you can't fit a surfboard, but, you know, I'm sure you could even throw it in the back seat if you really wanted. I'm sure you can get a surfboard in here if you tried. Um, I don't think it would be too hard. But, um, what else is there to say about it? If you're looking for a car that's good for on MPG, you might want to stay away from these. They're okay. On the police interceptors, I you know, on average, I get like 18, something like that, 17, 18 miles per gallon. If I really try to get good fuel economy, like the most I ever got was like 20. Um, that was like a, a day that I drove a lot on the parkway. And I was doing like 80, 85 for, you know, most of my distance. So that's why I got like 20. I'm sure if you drove a little bit more economical, you know, if you drove a little bit nicer, you could probably see something like uh, 21, 22 maybe. I can't really see it being too much more than that unless you're like hyper miling or something. Um, so MPG wise, if you're looking for something like that, you know, this may be something to stay away from, but you know, it, it's, it's not that bad considering it's a V8. Um, another thing that's great about these cars, you know, if you want something that's a little bit sportier, um, something a little bit different to drive. You don't want some like boring Honda Civic or something that like, you know, everyone drives around here. Like there's two Honda Civics over there. There's a couple Kias and Hyundais down there. Another Civic all the way down at the end. Honda Civic, you know, if you don't want to drive something, actually, I'm sorry, it's a Honda Accord down there. But, you know, if you don't want to like drive like just some boring regular Honda Accord or whatever, um, these are definitely something that is, you know, I feel a much better driving experience, um, you know, the rear wheel drive, which can be a good and bad thing, you know, one, it can make you a good driver, um, but also, you know, you got to know what you're doing driving a rear wheel drive vehicle, you know what I mean, like, if you would say, you know, let's say I'm a parent, and I want to give my son or daughter, you know, a car, like, I bought them this car, when that time came, you know, when that time came and there's snow on the ground, I'm going to make sure they know how to drive this car. I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, here's the keys, you know, go drive. You know, you need, when it comes to a rear-wheel drive car, you kind of need to teach them a little bit more how to drive a rear-wheel drive car. Um, in the rain, even, you can slip out, depending on what type of tires you have. These tires are really grippy, so I don't have an issue in rain. But if you put a, a cheaper set of tires on here, even like the tires that come on, the Eagle RSAs, anytime rain hits the ground, as soon as there's a raindrop on the ground, expect your rear end to be sliding out. Those tires are garbage. Um, so if you put cheaper tires on here, you know, you got to have some type of control of your car. You got to kind of know what you're doing. Um, so that is one thing. If you do get one, you know, make sure you know how to drive a rural drive car or have someone kind of show you, you know, the driving characteristics on that. Um, that is like the only thing I could say is kind of unsafe about these for a teenage driver. Other than that though, I see all benefits of rear wheel drive compared to front wheel drive. I think it handles better. Um, drive smoother I, I think rear wheel drive is way better than front wheel drive um, all wheel drive is the best for I say for a teenage driver uh, that way they can handle any condition do whatever but you know rear wheel drive is definitely better in my opinion than front wheel drive cars um, what else is there to say about it I mean we were saying it you know it's a little sporty or something a little bit different it's got a V8 so you know if you're looking for something a little bit sportier for your teenage kid, you know, they're they're nice. You can pick them up cheap, you know, you can have some fun with them. They're pretty reliable, you know. There, there's plenty of Crown Vicks out there with 400, 500,000 miles on them. Um, I saw a Grand Marquis, not a Grand Marquis, I saw a Lincoln Town Car with a Junker at one time that had uh, like 600,000 miles, I think it was. So, you know, I've seen 
a lot of Panther cars with a lot of miles on them. There's a few little things here and there you have to do over the years, things that will fail or break. I've made a video on that, you know, just, just scroll down through my videos. Or I'll even put in the link in the description, I don't know. And, uh, you know, you can watch that video too. But overall, for a teenage kid, I think they're great. Um, I don't see why someone wouldn't want to buy this for, you know, their their son, daughter, or whatever. I mean, they're, they're super safe. They're built like tanks. They're, they're really durable. Um, I saw a video of a video, uh, I saw a video of a video, Jesus Christ. I saw a video of a, um, a guy, he was documenting a car, and it was like, Ugh. it hit a barrier, like, a, it slammed straight into a barrier, like, 60 miles an hour, and, like, yeah, the whole front end was smashed in, but, like, the actual cabin part where the passenger was and the driver, there was, there was no damage on the inside. You could still open and close the doors after hitting a barrier at 60 miles an hour. I mean, that, that shows you right there, just how durable these cars really are and how safe they really are. Um, has ABS, um, you know, it doesn't have traction control. The newer ones have that. If you get like an 04, 05, they're not gonna have that. I think they start in 06. So there's a few things that are safety things that this car won't have compared to a new one. But I don't know, they're still overall very safe, even without all that, that stuff. You know, if you know how to drive, you don't need to have traction control and all that. ABS, yeah, I'd say that's definitely good to have, but as long as you know how to drive, you don't even need half that stuff anyway. Um, that's pretty much it on today's video. I think I, I personally, I think they're a great, a great car for a teenage driver. Um, whether you're looking to buy one for your kid, daughter, or you know, if you're looking to buy one yourself, I say go ahead and do it. Just um, if you are gonna go buy one, just make sure you bring someone with you that kind of knows about these cars a little bit, so you don't buy yourself a lemon. I say that's definitely a number one thing, is just make sure you have a, a well-built one because, you know, parts for these can be kind of expensive sometimes, for at least for the police interceptors, and you might end up having, you know, just a money pit of a car, and that's the last thing you want for a teenage kid. Alright, see you guys later. Like, comment, and subscribe.